What's going on? My name is Xavier. And I'm Mariah, and we have the honor and privilege to serve as the coordinators for the Dance and Arts Ministry here at Living Praise. We just want to say thank you so much for tuning in and watching from wherever you are. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has an incredible word in store just for you today, so let's jump right into it. So what are you asking and what are you saying? And I, he says, tell my people this. Pentecost is not just a moment. It's not just a day. Yes, we commemorate today, but it's not just a day. He says, tell my people, you have a time and a place. We are in a season where he needs us to walk in Pentecost daily. Because why? It's a power from God. Now, the, the prerequisite of walking in this power is that you can't forget that the power is his and not yours. And then your other request is to let others see God, not us. Through, we got to let him see us. So I said, okay, God, what are you saying? He says, go to 2 Kings. And I said, Lord, you're talking Pentecost. He said, go to 2 Kings. And the Bible says in 2 Kings, Elisha, the, uh, the Shunammite woman, he, they built him a room and, and he, he gives the woman, he tells the woman, what do you have need of? And she says, I'm good, I'm fine. And they saw, Gehazi saw that she didn't have a child. And he, says, he says, by this time next year, you're going to conceive. The Bible says she conceives and, and the, the child dies. She goes to the man and she goes back to the man of God. She says, I told you, don't tease me. Don't play with me. You said that I would have a son. And the Bible says that he tells Gehazi, take my staff and go to the boy's room. Lay the staff on the boy. And the boy, he says, he lays the staff on the boy. And the Bible says, Gehazi, come back and say, uh, sir, nothing happened with the staff. And the Bible says Elijah walks in the room. He goes in the room and he stretches out on the boy. I said, God, what are you saying? He's saying, in this hour, tell my people if you will allow me to stretch out and put my weight on you. This hour and this day, the Bible says he laid the staff, but nothing happened. And Elisha put his body head to head, mouth to mouth, hand to hand, feet to feet. And when he laid on the boy, the Bible says his skin started to get warm. His body started to get warm. What do you say? When you pack a power with God, it matters not that it's dead. It matters not what it looks like. When the power lies on the inside, it will cause it anything to live he said I said okay God he says remember the showdown 
with the 450 prophets. I said, yes, same guy, same prophet. He says, Elijah stood against 450 prophets, and, and, and they calling on their God. And Elijah, when you know you got a power with God, you can stand against anything. It matters not how many is against you. It was 450 against one, but the one and God was the majority. Standing up with them prophets. And they call on their God and they call and nothing is happening. Nothing is moving. And God, Elijah said, wake him up. Maybe he's asleep. Uh, call on your God. So you can relax in the dark day because you know who's backing you up. You can relax in the evil day because you know who you got. Elijah calls down fire from heaven. And the Bible says the fire licked up the water that they had built in the church. It just, I said, God, well, what are you saying? He says, tell my people in this next dispensation, in this next move, you will have to have my power. Now we must understand we can't presume upon God's power. We can't presume that we got, we just got it because we got, no, no. There is a prerequisite to this power. And I said, well, God, what are you saying? He says, tell my people, Elisha's pedigree was that he was hid in me. He was so hid in God that God gave him his power. He gave him his authority. And I said, well, God, what, what you want us to do in this moment, next moment? He says, tell them what sets you up for the power is your yes, Lord. What sets you up to get the power is yes, I'll obey. What sets us up for this power is yes, Lord. I'm not looking for people that's going to, oh, you're wonderful. No, no. I want somebody that's going to say, yes, Lord. I want you to be sitting in the back of the church and your yes, Lord, will move Satan. Your yes, Lord, will back him up. You don't have to have the mic, but when you got a yes, Lord, down in your soul, your yes, Lord, pulls him closer. Your yes to his will, say. Anybody want the power of God? Let's see what you want to tell him. Yes, Lord. Oh, y'all got to do better than that. Tell him, yes, Lord. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to my seat. But he say, in this next move, you will walk wherever you are. Don't expect for the power to just move in the church. No, no. I want to be in the grocery store. And the devil wants to act the food. But because I'm in the store, you can't do what you want to do. Because... Say in this next hour, it's things that are getting ready to happen that's going to break it and, and scare a lot of people's minds. But those of who that stand in the power and in the might of God, it don't matter where we go. The devil will have to be subject because I'm in there. can be on a plane and the pilot ain't piloting the plane Dr. Joe because I'm on the plane it's the Lord piloting because I got one the next time you walk in the grocery store come on brother I got to go the next time you walk in the grocery store, you tell every demon, every devil, because I pack a power with God, you're going to be subject because of my yes, Lord. Woo! Listen, listen. We're inviting the choir to get up. Come on stage. Get ready for ministry. But I need you to tell your neighbor, is there a yes in your mouth? Come on, tell your neighbor, is there a yes in your mouth? Because if I got the power, if I got the power, have mercy ladies and gentlemen stand on your feet as we accept
the ministry of Dr. Joe Pace. Praise God, praise God in this place, in this place. Hallelujah. You may take your seat. What a privilege to be here this morning. I'll tell you this, um, this place has a special place in our hearts. Uh, to Apostle Hodge, Pastor Hodge, uh, you may not remember this, but uh, we were with you. I was uh, with you almost, it's been some 16 years ago. You're at a different location, and uh, I was with you. I was uh, dating at the time, and uh, had come uh, with my date. Uh, she's cousins with uh, Sister Tammy, and so we came to see family here, came to church. Little did I know, uh, Apostle Hodge somehow decided he was going to speak to me that day. And uh, he spoke a word in my life that day some 16 years ago. He said to me, well, you got your mate, and once you set the date, you'll elevate. Ah, we were just talking about it. I remember it like it was yesterday. And now, 15 years later of marriage. God has done just that. Uh, so, you dear to our hearts, we thank you for that. Thank you for that word uh, that you spoke uh, to us. And in line with Pentecost, aligned with the word that we just heard, we want to encourage you that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Be careful what you say, watch what you say, and regardless of what people will speak into your life, you speak life. Come on, choir, listen.
frustration always on your mind you haven't smiled in quite some time concept of speaking life is not about mere wishful thinking or hopeful expectation. It is indeed being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. It's standing on the undeniable, unshakable truth that nothing is over until God says it's over. You tried and you failed, but speak life and try again. You ran and you fell, but speak life and run again. You fell in love, it didn't last, but speak life and love again. Somebody said that you would die, but they were wrong. Speak life and live again. Because nothing is over until God says it's over. It may be on life support, but it's not over may be in a state of suspended animation, but it's not over till God says it's over. Can we encourage you right here? Let, let's sing it together. Come on. Say it's, it's not, not over. It's 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 not over. Speak loud.
it takes to take it.
God and say, you better speak life. I, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm speaking life. Speak life to the dead thing. Speak life to that thing. You're going to make it. Speak life. What I want you to do is go to your neighbor and just say, neighbor, live. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. right here we're going to stay right here because this is the way we're going to end the service I was uh, I studied Pentecost and um, one of the things that the Holy Ghost was pointing out to me is that that Jesus gave the formula for acquiring any promise and what he did he told his, he gave his disciples the proclamation. We're going to stay right where we are because this is where we're going to end it. He gave them a proclamation. He said, go to the upper room and wait for the promise. That was the command. Then he stated the promise. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come on you. Yeah. Then he spoke the patience. Wait until you receive it <laughs> then he said the performance of it would be God's business that God would manifest himself in that upper room so as I begin to go and, and look through it I saw something that sometimes we fail to do he gave us instruction, right? And sometimes we don't follow the instructions all the way, but we still want the promise to manifest. But the promise don't manifest. And so, and so he said to me, my people, they get tired in the wait. And he says, they don't understand waiting is a ministry. We, we call it the ministry of waiting on the Lord. Okay? And so, so what happens to people is when God says something, you have to respond. Your sound from earth provokes another sound from heaven. So you got to be careful of your sound. Because if your sound is full of complaint, if your sound is full of sadness, if your sound is grievous, it's not the right sound. I don't think you, I, th I don't think you catch me yet. I think, see, I can't exegete it because we're out of time, so I can't really take you to the back office and show you. So you got to catch this the way I'm giving to you. When you're under attack, you have to be confident that God's going to do what He told you. The problem with us is we have a promise, but when we get under attack and we get into challenge, our sound changes. In the ministry of waiting, you're supposed to have a sound of joy and a sound of praise. Okay, if, if, if we understand this, we understand that what he promised is a guarantee. 
So it doesn't matter how long I got to wait. But if I don't know how to wait, I can sabotage the performance of the promise. So my ministry of waiting is my praise that I give to him daily. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. If you know the sound, if you know the sound, if you know the sound, Jehoshaphat had a revelation and, and, and they made a sound. They prayed and all of these people surrounded them was going to destroy them. But they prayed and then the Holy Ghost dropped in the camp and said, you have no need to fight in this battle. The battle is the Lord's. Then Jehoshaphat appointed singers and praisers to go out in front of the warriors to make a sound. And once they make the right sound, no matter the challenge, God fought their battle. I think somebody's making a sound. I think somebody's making a sound. chained and the first thing they did they prayed and they praised God but they were whipped and chained up but they made a sound and the sound was a sound of celebration oh you don't seem to understand it's your response to what's going on that's going to determine your outcome it's not what the devil is doing. It's not what your critics are saying. It's not what your situation is. It is what's coming out of your mouth because if God already spoke it over your life, it's guaranteed and all you got to do is make the right sound. So all you got to do is make the right sound. The problem is we start talking to about how we're not going to make it. When God already said you're going to make it. How did you come up with that evil report? How did you say I be not able. When God said I've given it to you already. And God cannot lie. Because when God says a thing. He swears by his own person. If he promised it. And he can't lie. Then what he said. Is permanent. Here's our issue. As it is in heaven, so shall it be in earth. See, we're not saying the same thing he's saying. You've been saying, I don't know what I'm gonna do. He's been saying, I already fought the battle for you. You've been saying, I'm going to die of this sickness. He been saying, I already healed you through the blood of my son. You got to get your sound right. You should be laying in the bed talking about, God, I trust you. God, I trust you. Look, don't be shacking up with nobody. Be telling the Lord, I know you're going to bring them to me. See, you ain't trying to help me, but you ain't making the right sound. You keep saying something different than what God is saying. As it is in heaven. 
And then when they look at you and say, you don't have it, I don't see it. I don't think this is real. Then you bring the scripture and says, faith is the substance of things. Hope for and the evidence of things not seen. So the evidence is not in what you can see. The evidence is in what I can say. <laughs> My evidence is real. Oh, I can feel it in my soul. That's why I live, because I speak life. Tell your neighbor, let's speak life together. Let's speak life to each other. I'm telling you, the storm is passing over. And by this time, by this time next year, But I got news for somebody by this time next month. And I got news for somebody else. It won't be long now. Because he's already got your due season. He's already planned your due season. It's already your turn. It's my time. It's my turn. My, 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 my. Do you see? The storm oh. is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm Woo. is passing over. Oh. Speak life. Speak life. The storm. And I know this is a holiday weekend. We do want to say thank you to all the servicemen, women served in the military. Have purchased our freedom with blood, sacrifice, serving the country. Thank you so much. Speak life. Speak life. 
Speak life. Speak to what thinks it's getting out of order in your life. You speak life to it. You, you speak life to it. You speak life to it. Hallelujah. Pastor, do you want to join me? Join me as we dismiss. Ooh. Won't be long. Won't be long. Won't be long. You'll be a testimony. Watch out now. The Lord is on your side. And it won't be long. Before he lifts your heart. How many enjoyed Dr. Joe Pace? He brought all that out. It's amazing. 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 Pastor Linda, close this out. Hallelujah. How you want to close this out? So, Father, we just praise you and we thank you as we have gathered together in your gathering place in the room. We thank you, Lord, that you have met us in the room on today. And we thank you what has been deposited in our spirit will never leave our life. But there shall be a multiplication of increase and enlargement. So, Father, we praise you and we thank you for all that has happened on today. And we thank you, Lord God, for the promotion. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the promotion. Lord, have mercy. The natural promotions as well as the spiritual promotion. Oh, my Jesus. We praise you for it. My Jesus. We thank you for it. My God, my God. We glorify your name for it, God. For all that you've done. All that you've and done. And all that you're getting ready to do. All that you're getting ready to do. And the church of the living God said, Ooh, yeah. Amen. And amen. Amen and amen, amen. We call you blessed, hearted, favorite. Oh, we'll see you in our next it service. Won't be long. Woo! It won't be long.